Did you know that the FDA might be responsible for thousands of deaths each year? Today we are going to talk about how the FDA's bureaucracy kills thousands of Americans each year. The FDA is a government organization responsible for approving America's food and drugs. The Food and Drug Administration was established in response to the so-called meatpacking crisis of the early 1900s. Progressives claimed that America's meat was too dirty. They made claims like humans were being accidentally fed into meat grinders, and that rats and other animals were being used to fill out the meat. Meat would be dropped on the floor and people would just pick it up and put it back on the conveyor belt to be served to the consumer. Books like The Jungle by Arthur Sinclair captivated the public with these forementioned discoveries. Therefore, we needed a government agency to oversee our food and drugs and to make sure America's food is pure and safe. Despite the fact that Sinclair never actually went to the meatpacking plant for a significant amount of time. A lot of it was up to his imagination to come up with, and not one worker actually reported humans being ground up into meat. Of all the pages, there's only four dedicated towards the so-called meatpacking conditions that were so terrible and ugly. He is actually on record saying that he never actually intended for this to be some expose on the meatpacking industry. Despite this, the progressives won, and on paper, the FDA seems like a great organization responsible for protecting us from bad drugs. However, since its founding, significant issues have arisen, leading to a phenomenon known as drug lag. Just as the FDA can keep bad drugs off the market, they can easily keep good drugs from getting onto the market. This is called drug lag. Life-saving medications often take a long time to approve, and because because of that, thousands of people die each year from waiting for that medication to be approved. Despite the fact that that medication may already be proven safe by the company developing it, or other countries around the world that have already approved it, or countries that may have approved it first faster than the United States. To illustrate the impact of this delay, consider the case of AZT, a medication for treating HIV slash AIDS. It was approved in Europe long before the United States and many Americans lost their lives waiting for its approval in 1998. The FDA's prolonged decision-making process not only hindered timely access to life-saving drugs, but also led to the seizure of personal supplies from travelers returning from Europe. This bureaucratic delay caused a tragic loss of life in the context of the HIV-AIDS crisis of the 1980s and 90s. The problem extends beyond HIV and AIDS. Very Various illnesses such as Ehlers-Danlos, a genetic condition marked by hypermobility and pain, suffer from the FDA's restrictive practices. Despite ongoing research in the availability of effective treatments, proposed medicines, Celiprolol, were rejected by the FDA. This decision, based on a slight possibility of ineffectiveness, denies patients access for those with vascular Ehlers-Danlos disease, whose life expectancy is limited, this denial of treatment can be especially devastating. As a libertarian, I believe that people own themselves and they should be able to try whatever medication they feel may be able to help them. Denying people the chance to try a life-saving medication is immoral and goes against every natural law principle there is. The decision to try life-saving medication should be up to the doctor and their patient, not the government. The nightmare caused by the FDA's bureaucratic mess is not just a cost in human lives. It is a cost in taxpayer money. It is a cost to businesses. It is a cost to the individual. It's a cost in general. Government regulation has caused the healthcare market to be overinflated. Simple medications like aspirins cost hundreds of dollars when done at an ER. When at a clinic, it only costs a couple bucks. The reason why medications are so expensive in America is that there is a lot of time and resources in developing certain medicines. As a result, the companies jack up the prices to try to recoup that loss. And where does the cost fall? On the consumers. Since they can't afford it, they lack the medical care they need. When in a free market, the functions of the FDA would be relegated to independent agencies that could approve medication at a far cheaper costs compared to the FDA's process. 
We see it with electronics like UL where they approve certain electronics and if there is any safety issues that arise, people can sue them. There is actual consequences to the actions of certain agencies that certify medications in a free market compared to the FDA where they make it very hard to sue them when they approve medications that shouldn't have been approved by any reasonable person in the first place. You'd think large corporations wouldn't like the FDA, but they love the FDA. Many of the proposed FDA regulations are actually lobbied by big corporations to prevent small companies from innovating. Combine that with intellectual property and patent laws and you have the nightmare which is America's health system. In conclusion, the FDA's contribution to the problem of drug lag has far-reaching consequences, hampers innovation, and impedes the goal of making essential medicines affordable to all.